Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Saluna Computing's uh, channel, a modular scalable data centers that convert wasted renewable energy into computing uh, power for intensive batchable uh, applications such as crypto mining and taking us through the earnings, uh, which are pretty pivotal as the company continues to diversify its streams of income here. Uh, we have John joining us. Welcome back. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. This is an uh, exciting time for the company as our, our sites are fully energized now and we're ramping up uh, ramping up our business. Um, I'd love to take you through the uh, our Q3 filing, we just announced that uh, here recently. I've got this deck that you can find on our investor page that takes you through uh, what's been happening in the company and why uh, this quarter is really uh, a pivotal one for us. If you look at uh, the way the company makes money, we do it by uh, looking at four key areas, two of which we do today and two that we plan to do in the future. Uh, we had started out primarily a proprietary mining business, uh, very little hosting. At the beginning of this year, when I took the helm, we shifted from proprietary mining and started to shift our operations to uh, hosting. And uh, those two areas we still do today, proprietary mining, we tend to do primarily with joint ventures, as you'll see in our Dorothy site. And we provide managed infrastructure services on the hosting side as well. In the future, we plan to add uh, grid ancillary services. Uh, you'll see in our quarterly update, we're making good progress uh, with that. And we plan to launch that uh, here uh, in the last quarter and, and uh, into the, the, the early part of next year. And we're also looking at other computing applications such as AI. We recently announced our Helix program where we will be building AI uh, purpose-built data centers for AI applications and workloads. Uh, you won't see that in our in our uh, quarterlies uh, this quarter or next quarter, but you'll start to see those those shifts take place as the business expands into these new markets. Um, very quickly, our process of making money is to take that those, those revenue streams and essentially uh, uh, create this loop or or uh, this flywheel. We source low cost power from IPPs build out uh, our facilities and MDCs, uh, focus on a two-year return on invested capital. We attract hosting customers for Bitcoin and in the future HPC. We provide ancillary services to the grid as another revenue stream. And then allows us to grow the assets on the management, the, number, the, the, the amount that we're uh, managing from an asset base that allows us to also grow and fund the growth of our pipeline. And then that allows us to source more power and begin the cycle again. So that's really uh, how we 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 do what we do, and we do it uh, very well. As a result, if you look at us today, we basically have uh, 75 megawatts under management, and we have the ability to grow that to over 291 megawatts, just under 300 megawatts, just from our current uh, signed and, and, and secured assets. We have over uh, two gigawatts more of that that we can we can continue to develop over time. Today, we have 2.6 exahash installed of hash rate on the Bitcoin side. Our operating power cost is among uh, some of the strongest in the industry, and that's uh, uh, $30 per megawatt uh, or less. Now, there's something new we've been reporting in, in our business updates, and that's how much curtailed energy we've consumed or monetized for our power partners. We, uh, year to date, uh, this is through October, uh, we consumed over 4,000 megawatt hours. And I think uh, ChatGPT told me that uh, over a billion uh, iPhones can be charged with something like something like uh, this much power. 1.02 1 in our uh, PUE. And we've deployed a lot of machines uh, over the last six months. Uh, pretty significant execution, if you, if you ask me, through the hot summer months. And uh, they've all, they're all very uh, low, uh, high efficiency machines rather. Uh, so uh, $30, 30 joules per, per terahash per second is sort of where you want to be on average uh, as we heading to uh, the halving. Now let's look at how this is taking shape in terms of uh, financials. We had four key focuses uh, this year. We focused on energizing Dorothy, uh, managing our expenses, uh, expanding our flagship, so looking at Dorothy and, and expanding into Dorothy 2, and also growing our pipeline. All of these activities have been executed very well by our team. I'm very uh, happy uh, about this and um, uh, you know, really proud of the team. 
for what they've been able to do throughout uh, the last six months. And as a result, from an operating perspective, um, this is what the business looks like. So if you look at uh, Q1, we started out with about $3 million in revenue uh, in, in the in the biz business shift, if you will, primarily uh, cryptocurrency uh, revenue. And we were just uh, uh, short or shy of, of being profitable that first quarter. Q2, uh, <laughs> that net loss increased with a lower revenue stream as we shifted from uh, uh, crypto mining more into hosting. And now you can see in Q3, that has taken a major shift, uh, $5.7 million, $5.8 million in revenue and uh, $1.4 uh, million in gross uh, profit. So that's pretty significant. And if you look at that from a visual perspective, you can see the shift here, right? We started out in our legacy business with uh, lots of miners that we owned in some of our K Kentucky facilities. Uh, not a lot of profit because they were less efficient miners than were available in the market. And we made the uh, uh, very uh, specific decision to transition from the cryptocurrency mining revenue to data hosting or hosting revenue. And we started that shift through Q2. And as you can see in Q3, we've already completed that swing to uh, these higher margin activities where we have uh, higher efficiency machines, joint ventures in, in Dorothy and uh, driving the results uh, from there. Uh, you can see all the detail in our queue uh, from a cash perspective, uh, we're still remaining strong uh, cash, 5.6 million uh, relative to last quarter was 7 million relative to last year is a pretty big jump, right? More than five times. And um, <clears throat> and you look at the overall balance sheet from a cash plus unrestricted cash, we're still well over $10 million. And um, from an operating uh, perspective, you can see here sort of the, 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 the revenue and flow through to uh, uh, net loss, which has come down significantly from a uh, gap perspective uh, year over year. And, uh, and in a, from an adjusted perspective where we add back stock compensation, uh, depreciation and other things like that, non-cash items, you see we're somewhere around $405,000. There's another point I want to make for, for those of your savvy uh, accountants out there. This $1.4 million from an operating perspective is really higher because if you add back depreciation, which is non-cash, it's actually 2.7 there. So uh, the business is actually doing much better than it did uh, the early part of this year. And, uh, you know, we're, we're quite excited about that. On that note, I appreciate the insights. If you guys have questions, let us know what you think in the comment section below. So perhaps we can do an investor Q&A down the road and consider subscribing for future updates. But on that note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.